shooting in Uvalde. Plus, we're back in Ireland with evening anchor Don Brubaker as he discovers Dublin. And we'll be taking a look at the tropics. We got a little bitty one right off the coast of the Yucatan, and we've got a much bigger one to concern ourselves with right here. That's tropical depression number two. Could be a tropical storm this weekend. We'll have more on that coming up. And sports director Max Williams caught up with the head coach of the Victoria Generals before tonight's second game against the Cane Cutters. Hear from him in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Karina Garcia. Don Brubaker is in Ireland. The former Uvalde school police chief has been criminally charged in the Robb Elementary School massacre. A grand jury issued a criminal indictment for injury of a child by omission for former police chief Pete Arando. The charge is issued under the Texas Penal Code when someone intentionally, knowingly, recklessly or with criminal negligence causes a child bodily injury. The former police chief claims that the gunman could not be stopped because the doors to several of the classrooms were locked. Other evidence did not support his claims. This morning, new reaction to the presidential debate. President Biden kicked off the debate with a raspy voice and at times struggled to finish his thought while Donald Trump spewed a string of falsehoods on everything from abortion to January 6th. This morning, the Biden campaign squashing concerns over the president's performance. I'd say a, he, a slow start, but a good and strong finish. And I think that what's most important is we saw an extraordinary contrast between the former president and the current president. Biden apparently losing his train of thought minutes into the debate. With the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Republicans pouncing. The Democrats are going to have plenty of thinking to do after tonight. The Biden campaign responding to the criticism, saying he was fighting a cold, calling it an off night, adding President Biden is the only person who has ever beaten Donald Trump. He will do it again. I think he did well. In the first of two scheduled debates, Biden and former President Trump sparring over issues, including abortion rights. No politician should be making that decision. A doctor should be making those decisions. If I'm elected, I'm going to restore Roe v. Wade. Every legal scholar throughout the world, the most respected, wanted it brought back to the states. I did that. The war in Ukraine. That's a war that should have never started. It would have never started ever with me. And Trump's legal issues. The only person on this stage is a convicted felon is the man I'm looking at right now. The contest getting sidetracked at times. The men attacking each other's golf game. I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. And, and, I've seen you swing. I know you swing. This morning, Democratic Party insiders privately expressing doubts about the future of Biden's campaign. And I think you're going to hear discussions that I don't know uh, will lead to anything, but, the, you know, there is going to there are going to be discussion about whether he should continue. Some Democrats are calling for Biden to step down. Andrew Yang being one of them. He says Biden has to be replaced. Perry Russ from ABC News, Washington. The Texas Supreme Court upheld Senate Bill 14, maintaining the state's ban on gender affirming care for minors. The 8 to 1 ruling overturns a lower court's block, allowing the law to deny gender transition surgeries, hormone therapies, and more to minors. This move follows similar restrictions in over 20 states. The Biden administration's stance sets the stage for a pivotal U.S. Supreme Court decision on states' rights versus medical care for minors. Bringing us to your Veer poll. This evening, you can scan that QR code right there on your screen to vote. The question is, do you agree with the Texas Supreme Court's decision regarding Senate Bill 14? Yes, no, or you're not sure. According to our results, it looks like 81% voted yes, followed by 19% standing at no. We thank you for voting. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part, and I'm going to have an update on 25 News Now at 10. And now let's take a look at your forecast with First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis. Well, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, the bubble of high pressure, which brought us the heat that went to the Midwest, well, it's back. That's why our temperatures are going to go up a little bit. But where it's parked is going to make a big difference on to which way that tropical activity goes. In about 10 days, we could be looking at a tropical system, and so we'll be talking more about that coming up in a moment. 
Mac, thank you. On Friday, the Supreme Court made a major ruling on cases pending against those charged in the January 6th Capitol riot. The high court decided the government went too far by bringing obstruction charges against hundreds of the rioters. The decision could also have implications for former President Donald Trump. He was charged with violating the same obstruction law, but for different reasons than the rioters. Prosecutors argued the charges were valid because rioters obstructed an official preceding Congress certification of the 2020 election. A Texas jury today found a driver guilty of intoxication manslaughter over the deaths of eight people. Alvarez drove an SUV that ran a red light, then plowed into a crowded bus stop outside a migrant shelter on the U.S.-Mexico border last May. The deadly scene happened in Brownsville, which has long been an epicenter for migration. He faces up to 160 years in prison. And now 25 News Now evening anchor Don Brubaker is in Ireland and this week we are showcasing Discovering Dublin with Don and here is what he saw Friday. Greetings from Ireland. We are here in Galway with Linda Halapaska. Boy, we have a fun day. We certainly have. I'll tell you what, Great. let's talk about what's going on. Now first, we traveled west this morning to Clonmacnoise, a ruined monastery nestled along the banks of the River Shannon. This ancient site with its remains of nine churches, a round tower, and high Celtic crosses was long a major center of religion and education, attracting scholars from all over Europe. Then we experienced authentic Irish hospitality at Connolly's Rathbon Farm where we watch sheep graze the fields as the fragrance of home-baked goods and a peat fire fill the air. We visited with our hosts in their charming thatched cottage while sampling freshly baked scones and a pot of Irish tea. Tell me about this day, Linda. How great was this? Oh, the weather is cool and it rains off and on, but it is wonderful. It's cool. The scenery, absolutely beautiful, breathtaking. <laughs> Thank you, Linda, and we continue our journey through Ireland tomorrow. Reporting from Galway, Ireland, Don Brubaker, KBU TV 25 News Now. And thank you, Don, for that one. Now, if you have not seen episode number one of Let's Grow Texas Ag, a great program on the state of agriculture in the crossroads, you can catch it this Saturday on three different Victoria Television Group stations. And these are going to be on KVU Saturday, June 29th at 5 p.m., KVCT Saturday, June 29th at 4 p.m., and at KXTS Saturday, June 29th at 11.30 a.m. Now remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. For now, stay with us. Authorities in Florida looking for a suspect accused of leaving a three-year-old on the side of the road. That's coming up on 25 News Now at 6. Also ahead, storms wreak havoc with flash flooding, but it's not just the water you need to watch out for. Learn how to stay safe from the risks lurking in floodwaters.
Authorities in South Florida are looking for a carjacking suspect who left a three year old on the side of the road. When the mother exited her vehicle after an accident to exchange information with the other driver, an unknown adult male entered the driver's side of her vehicle and drove away with her child still inside. The suspect then placed the three year old on the sidewalk. Another moment captures the subject abandoning the vehicle. The final video captures the subject using the victim's credit card at a family dollar store. Now, if you're traveling today, you are not going to be alone. The TSA expects to screen more than 3 million passengers. If that happens, it would make it the busiest travel day ever, surpassing the previous record set Sunday with 2.99 million individuals screened. The Independence Day holiday started Thursday and lasts through Monday, July 8th. TSA expects to screen 32 million people during that time frame. Now, summer storms often bring flash flooding, and here's how to fight health risks related to those floodwaters. More than two feet of rain in just two days. That just happened in South Florida. And because of human amplified climate change, these flash flood events are becoming more frequent and more intense. That's because with every degree of warming, another 4% of moisture ends up in the atmosphere, increasing the chances of those heavy rains. Add that to our constant expanse of asphalt where there was once native grass or soil and you have a big change that can turn into big problems. And when that flash flooding happens, health officials are warning people to stay away from standing water whenever you can. It's important for folks to remember that floodwaters are contaminated. The floodwaters are usually will be referred to as black water because uh, sewage and industrial waste would have overflowed into this water. So people should worry about bacteria, viruses, but also chemical irritants. Balsari says that contact with contaminated water can cause infections, rashes, or even other illnesses. If you're exposed, they say you should wash the area as soon as possible with soap and clean water, and then rewash contaminated clothing with hot water and detergent before you use them again. Decontaminate yourself, treat this as a chemical exposure, or as an exposure to pathogens rather than you just having waded into dirty water. This is easier said than done because often when there is widespread flooding, access to clean water becomes a challenge. The safest thing to do is to boil the water and let it cool down before you use it to wash. Flood events can also overwhelm healthcare systems. So for people with chronic health issues, Balsari recommends talking with your doctor about what you should do if a natural disaster should get in the way of you getting the health care that you need. With this Climate Minute, I'm Ginger Z. Wildly beloved foods have recalled dozens of packages of dried pasta because of a potential mold growth contamination. The pasta in question included vegan dried products sold to various states in the Washington state area. The company says the products were under dried and had the beginning signs of mold, but no illnesses have been reported. Consumers who purchased the affected products should return them for a full refund immediately. Well, good afternoon, everyone. 91 degrees out there, a little warm and sticky. Feels like summertime because it is. Uh, had a high of 92 today, which compares to 93. So, yeah, it's supposed to be warm this time of year. And uh, your weekend is pretty good, no problem. The tropics, however, are getting busy, and we got to talk about them because we got several systems uh, to deal with. All that coming up in a moment.
Well, we had another day of those little afternoon showers. I caught one, but I waited 10 minutes and it was over. Uh, Seasons a little sea breeze showers that come in as the uh, land heats up. The ocean air brings it in and you see this little band of showers that sort of came through the air, but no major problems. I mean, if you catch if you catch some rain, well, you'll be in lucky one. The dome of high pressure is back on top of us. It had been in the Midwest for a couple of weeks, but as it comes back, you can see how everything has to sort of spin around it because this is stable air that doesn't really allow for any stormy weather. Well, that is going to have a big factor on what happens to us about seven to 10 days from now. And you're wondering what's seven to day, 10 days from now. Well, we could be in the tropical business, okay? Let me show you. First of all, we have a little bitty one right about there, just about to move on shore uh, in Chetumal, which is uh, along the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. That's coming ashore and then crossing the Bay of Campeche. Looks like it's gonna be bringing more rain to Veracruz, Puebla, and those areas of Southern Mexico. But then we go out to the Atlantic and we have something new. This is now a tropical depression. This will likely become Beryl, B-E-R-Y-L, in about two days, I believe by Sunday. This will be our first tropical named storm of the season. So uh, as it develops and it's got plenty of running room, we've got to make sure we know where it's going. Now here's the current path and you can see the lines behind this. Those are the computer model predictions. And when they're that close together, you can bet that's what's going to happen. So the computer models are very good agreement that is going to be uh, strengthening up to 40 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour when it hits the, the lesser Antilles. Then as a category two, it's going to be somewhere in the Caribbean. So, uh -huh. That now has to get, instead of one eye uh, watching, you got to have both eyes watching because it looks like by the time we get to next week, the storm is going to be somewhere in the mid-central Caribbean. So is it going this way or is it going this? It's not going straight because of the high pressure. However, I believe that it's gonna be rolling across and heading into the Yucatan and then crossing into the Bay of Campeche. But that's my prediction seven to 10 days from now, so it's a long way off. So all I'm telling you is that we need to get ready and be watching very carefully to see what that does. Looking for a good weekend though, 94, a little on the warm and steamy side. Everybody away from the coast is in the triple digits, so yep, it's hot. We do have a heat advisories up for tomorrow. Just consider that uh, in the middle of the afternoon, you don't want to overdo it too much. Make sure you get plenty of fluids. And of course, the evenings are going to be fairly comfortable. The uh, central part of the heat is really going to be right in Arkansas and Oklahoma. Of course, we're on the southern end of that ridge. In other words, the ridge is right here creating the heat. We're on the southern end of it, so that ridge has to go somewhere and we'll be watching it to see what it does. All right, so we'll take a look at your forecast. Those of you in Port Lavaca, not a bad looking week. I would go fishing, I would get the boat out, I would go boating, it's gonna be a good weekend for that. No significant wind, lots of sun, one or two little isolated showers in the afternoon hours. In Cuero, you're gonna get up to 95, so it will be a little warmer, but then we look at our seven day forecast and you can see right about here, we're gonna be into the mid 90s for the early part of next week. And then we'll certainly uh, be watching for thanks, uh, rather 4th of July. And you can see we've got a high of 94 and a 20% chance of rain. And then for the weekend, well, we're gonna have to look at that next week. At your seven day forecast, reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Be sure to scan that and put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Karina. Thank you, Mac. And now here's Zach Brown with your sports. After a wild walk-off last night, Sports Director Max Williams caught up with Michael Oros. Hear from him in sports.
The Generals were the best team in the TCL in the first half. A walk-off win last night at Riverside keeps the good times rolling. And Sports Director Max Williams caught up with the head coach of the Victoria Generals ahead of their game tonight. I'm standing here at the head coach of the Victoria Generals here, Michael Oros. And coach, your team went 16-7 and seven here in the first half of the season. And so what's it, what's, how's it been like with the current success of the team at this point? Well, it's been great so far. It's always nice to get off to a good start and kind of teach our philosophies and, and culture that we want to create here in the short time that we have them. And they bought in real quick, and, and the results showed for them, themselves. And we hope that in the second half we can continue this trend. So yesterday you guys held Alzheimer's Awareness Night and then and looked at it. You guys raised about $20,000 looked like at the event. So what did that event like mean to you and like to the team itself here, here at Victoria? For sure, it's been a great partnership and, and anything we can do to help cure a disease like Alzheimer's is, is great. And, and what little we do with a jersey is awesome. And, um, you know, that brings the fans out and that gets our guys fired up. And then we end up putting on a, a pretty good show. It was a late night last night, but we, we pulled away with the win late and, uh, and it couldn't ask for a better night. So now you guys got to look ahead now to the second half of the season. And so what's it going to take for you guys to kind of just get that momentum going, going into playoffs in early August? So we have a new crop of guys coming in that will be here around July 6th. And we got a core group that's going to stick around and some guys will be leaving. We need to have that core group instill those beliefs and systems that we put in place the first half with the new guys in the second half to keep this rolling. And if we can do that, I like our chances in the end. All right, that will be it here with our head coach here, Michael Oros. First pitch here tonight will be at 7.05 p.m. here at Riverside Park against the Arcania Cane Cutters. This is Max Williams, KVU TV 25 News Now Sports. Thanks, Max. A federal judge in California issued a massive judgment against the NFL on Thursday. The league was ordered to pay $4 billion. The class action lawsuit claimed the NFL broke antitrust laws with its NFL Sunday ticket. That's a television package where subscribers can buy access to games. The plaintiffs argued the league restricted competition and sold the out-of-market sports package at an inflated price. The NFL pledged to contest the decision. The decision wasn't as huge as it could have been. The plaintiffs were seeking $7 billion in damages. Like father, like son, the LA Lakers selected Bronny James in the second round of the NBA draft on Thursday. He is the eldest son of the Lakers star. It was taken with the 55th pick overall out of the University of Southern California. That means Bronny will have the chance to play on the same team as his father, who of course is the league's all-time leading scorer, maybe the best basketball player of all time. It's something that Elder James has been saying he desperately wanted. He even said he'd become a free agent and give up millions of dollars to play for whatever team drafted his son. Bronny James could put on a Lakers jersey as early as July 12th for the NBA Summer League. Next season could mark the first time a father and son have ever played in the same league at the same time, and while Bronny and LeBron are having a like father, like son moment, well, you'll never believe what anchor Karina Garcia is trying to be like, right? What am I trying to be like? You're trying to be like me, like sports reporter, like anchor. She's got a story that you're... Yeah, I'm going to be stepping on a few toes here because we're going to be back in a moment with the 55th pick of the Los Angeles Lakers. You're making history. We have this story and one last look at your weather next.
And as we were just talking about, the Los Angeles Lakers made history by selecting Ronnie James. The 19 year old son of LeBron James. This makes him the first father son duo to play in the NBA at the same time and on the same team. Now, something Zach didn't mention actually was that last summer he actually saved it for you. Mm, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Well, last summer he suffered cardiac arrest and collapsed during a workout while playing with the University of Southern California. So, Zach, what is your take on this? This is your field. This oh, is boy, your base. put me on the spot. I'll, say, I'll, I'll tell you what, it shows a lot about his work ethic because he did come back later that year to have the confidence to be able to bounce back from that. He wasn't great. He probably wouldn't have gotten drafted if he wasn't LeBron's son but to come <laughs> back from that I mean when the goat's your father you got the chance to develop so yeah, yeah I personally wouldn't have wanted my team to draft him what but he could the, what I think he's ticker? got a pacemaker in there I think he's oh. fine I mean it's, he's I think it happened at practice so he's lucky he was there around some wow. official second home and that's why I'm gonna leave sports to you from <laughs> now on yeah, thank you. all righty well what about this weather Mac well weekend's looking good looking uh, summer and warm just like normal summer stuff uh, we're got that Slight chance of a shower or two, but as we mentioned earlier, the tropics are getting busy, and I'll have the latest for you tonight. Thank you, Mac, and we'll see.